Hello, I'm Eksun Kavaklıoğlu, and today I'm going to be presenting my term project for Foundations of Magnetic Resonance Imaging course. And my topic is Gradient Echo and Spin Echo. So first, I will introduce the subject and define Gradient Echo and Spin Echo separately. And then I will compare and contrast Gradient Echo and Spin Echo. Uh, and after that, we will see some simulations to understand the subject better. And then we'll, we will conclude this presentation. To start with, the goal for this project is to explain Gradient Echo and Spin Echo and also compare them according to their features, uh, compare their differences and similarities, and then see simulations to understand the subject uh, in a deeper manner. To start with some basic concepts, an MR signal is a small electrical current induced in a receiver coil by the precession of the net magnetization during resonance. And the free induction decay is a damped oscillation at the resonance frequency, which is usually the Larmor frequency, recorded when the net magnetization is tipped into the transverse plane. And the FID, free induction decay, is a damped sine wave of the form we can see on the slide. A gradient echo is simply a manipulation of the free induction decay signal that begins by applying an external dephasing gradient field. This gradient causes a change in the local magnetic fields and alters the resonance frequency slightly across the specimen. This results in accelerated dephasing. After this, the process is reversed by applying a rephasing gradient with the same strength but opposite polarity to the dephasing gradient, reversing or undoing the phase scramble. As a result, a small uh, gradient echo is generated. The T2 and T2 star decays are not affected by this situation. In the image below, we can see a pulse sequence for generating a gradient echo, where TR is the recovery time, TE is the time of echo, and GS, GP, and GF are gradients. In this image, on the left-hand side, we can see a free induction decay where no gradient is applied. And on the right-hand side, we can see a generated gradient echo caused by the application of a dephasing gradient and a rephasing gradient in this order. A single RF pulse generates a free induction decay, but two successive RF pulses produce a spin echo. By applying a second RF pulse, certain dephase components of the original FID can be refocused into a spin echo. The 90-degree pulse first tips these spins into the transverse plane. Because of the local microscopic fields may differ slightly, some spin groups may precess faster and gain phase relative to others. The 180 degree pulse now turns the entire system on its head. After the flip, the faster precessing spins are now at the back of the pack. They eventually catch up with the slower spins. This occur occurs at time TE equals to 2T, or 2 tau in figure 4.5 which is the center of the spin echo. Beyond the echo center, the faster spins once again leave the slower one behind, and the system dephases again. The main differences between gradient echo and spin echo can be seen in this table. A spin echo is produced by pairs of RF pulses, but a gradient echo is produced by a single RF pulse with a gradient reversal. Then, since only one RF pulse is applied, the echo can be recorded much more quickly in a gradient echo sequence. As a result, echo time TE is generally shorter for a gradient pulse sequence than for a spin echo sequence. Other than these, in gradient echo imaging, the gradient reversal refocuses only those spins that have been dephased by the gradient itself. So, phase shifts resulting from magnetic field inhomogeneities, static tissue susceptibility gradients, or chemical shifts are not cancelled at the center of the gradient echo, as they are in spin echo sequences. Also, image contrast is dictated not by the true T2 relaxation, but by other factors which constitute T2 start in gradient echo. As a result, gradient echo sequences are more frequently troubled by susceptibility and chemical shift artifacts. Also, in gradient echo, the flow of blood is called bright blood, but in spin echo, the flow of blood is called black blood. Here's a more detailed table. The different things from the main table we have seen in the previous slide 
are the data on short and long echo times and short and long repetition times. The short echo time is between 1 and 3 milliseconds for gradient echo and between 6 and 25 milliseconds for spin echo. The long echo time is between 7 and 15 milliseconds for gradient echo and it is between 60 and 100 milliseconds for the spin echo. The short repetition time for gradient echo is between 3 and 400 milliseconds. The short repetition time is between 400 and 800 milliseconds for the spin echo. The long repetition time for gradient echo is more than 400 milliseconds, and for spin echo it is between 1500 milliseconds and 2500 milliseconds. The shortest practical TR for gradient echo is between 2 and 5 milliseconds, but the shortest practical TR for the spin echo is 200 milliseconds. To explain black blood in spin echo, we must understand high velocity signal loss, or washout. This effect occurs only in spin echo because of the presence of the 180 degree pulse. The tissues in a slice will receive both the excitation pulse and the refocusing pulse. Both pulses are slice selective. But if the blood that was in the slice when the 90 degree pulse was applied has left the slice when the 180 degree pulse was applied, there will be no prepared magnetization to refocus and form an echo from the blood. The blood in the slice at the time of the 180 degree pulse will not have received a 90 degree pulse and so there will be no magnetization in the transverse plane to refocus to an echo. In spin echo, tissues and blood must receive both RF pulses to produce an echo. So when blood flows out of the slice, black blood appears on the image, which shows the absence of the signal. This effect can be partial if only some of the excited blood has left the imaging slice between the two RF pulses. And now we will see some simulations. Before the more detailed MATLAB simulation, Here's a very simple simulation to understand spin echo. This is a spin echo simulation. The spreading lines represent the phasing. To conclude the presentation, we can say both gradient echoes and spin echoes are used commonly. They also have different advantages and disadvantages. However, even though they have differences, they also have similarities due to their natures. Here are my references. Thank you for watching my presentation.